In September of 2011, we rescued tigers Andre, Arthur, and Amanda from the Wild Animal Orphanage in San Antonio, Texas. A year earlier, the Wild Animal Orphanage that was home to almost 400 big cats, bears, wolves, and primates declared bankruptcy and had begun to search for new homes for their animals. Obviously, this was a mammoth task. They contacted GFAS, the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries, and other organizations for help, but struggled for over a year to place them. This is no surprise to us because we know one tiger costs Big Cat Rescue around $10,000 per year in food and vet care. Amazingly, an anonymous donor couple stepped forward to fund the ongoing care of Andre, Arthur, and Amanda if we could raise funds for the transport and enclosure additions. They'd known the Tigers as cubs when they lived at a facility in New Jersey in 1996. This was closed by the state in 2003, and the 24 Tigers had been rescued by the Wild Animal Orphanage. Now, 15 years later, the donors wanted to make sure the tigers could retire to a permanent sanctuary. So by comparing stripe patterns on the old cub photos to the adult cats, we were able to get a match or partial match on six tigers. With the rescue mission to go, BCR staff headed to Texas. We met with IFA staff plus Laura and JT from Loving Friends Transport at the rescue site, who had driven up to Texas days earlier with the tiger transport cages. Wild Animal Orphanage volunteers had already started to load the tigers into the cages, so coordinating with IFAW staff, we went ahead and connected the truck back up to the trailer and started running the AC for the tigers. We had to stay back and observe the cats from a distance while they were being transported to the front of the property one by one. Obviously, they were stressed and not used to large groups of people, and they were definitely letting us know. <coughs> Unfortunately, when they were unloading the last tiger from the trailer, the transport cage dropped, damaging a wheel and adding to the stress level of the cats. So once everything was in place, we began to load the tigers as soon as possible into the cool, dark trailer. We loaded Arthur first and strapped the transport cage in place. You can see here the camera that let us observe the tigers from the cabin of the truck on the way back to Tampa. Andre was next and he loaded really well. But the female, Amanda, was very upset about the move and showed us yet again why these animals do not belong in backyards as so-called pets. But they all settled down and once all the transport cages were secure and they all had water for the journey, we didn't waste any time and got back on the road. It took about 22 hours driving straight through back to Big Cat Rescue in Tampa. All three tigers traveled well and we kept an eye on them throughout the journey on the monitor. We arrived back at the sanctuary and were greeted by the media, and then by Tiger Wars. <laughs> by this time, all three tigers were definitely ready to get out of the trailer and into their new enclosure. Amanda was being particularly aggressive and literally tore chunks from her transport cage. This was just the wooden trim and did not affect the integrity of the cage. And to make matters worse, the wheel on the cage had been bent out of shape in Texas, so attaching it precisely to the actual enclosure took longer than expected. But after one final spurt of aggression, she stepped into her new home and headed to the pool for a drink, while the transport cage headed in for repairs. As you can see, Andre was also very vocal on the way to his new home and just wanted out. We soon had the cage strapped up to the enclosure and slid the door up to give him access. He entered the enclosure understandably grumpy and then decided to make sure we all knew how much. Last but not least, we unloaded Arthur, who was equally annoyed and leapt into his new enclosure as soon as we opened the door. These tigers are without a doubt the most aggressive we've ever dealt with. They were extremely scared. This can probably be attributed to the fact that the Wild Animal Orphanage wasn't open to the public, and they were only used to a few keepers that worked directly with them. Plus, the New Jersey facility where they lived prior kept them in tight quarters, so the 22-hour journey in these transport cages could have been a reminder of that time, too. It took them a couple of weeks to really get used to life at the sanctuary. They'd spent the previous seven years in a heavily wooded area in Texas without much of a view. So their huge enclosure with open land on one side and a lake view on the other must have been so foreign to them, yet exciting and enriching at the same time. Mm. Arthur has been the most outgoing from the start. He was the first one to make friends with the keepers and was very interested in his new surroundings. He was a little scared of his first enrichment tube, but then decided it was all good. Andre took longer to adjust, but soon couldn't resist checking out the views or exploring with his brother, and sometimes we even caught them staying together. 
Their sister Amanda took much longer to warm up to people. Staff have been using operant conditioning to overcome her fear and help her realize that we bring the food and are not a threat to her. The three A's, as we call them, have all enjoyed Halloween pumpkin enrichment, whole turkeys for Thanksgiving, and Christmas presents to destroy since their arrival. Feeding time is without a doubt their favorite time of day. They're extremely food aggressive and are eating much more than the other tigers at the sanctuary. They've been hungry for a long time, so they're gaining weight and because they've always lived together, they probably have psychological issues around food because they're used to fighting for it. And they give us a daily reminder that they're wild, dangerous animals despite how cute they may look sometimes. Hardly a week goes by now that there isn't a case in the news of a big cat facility, once considered a safe haven for their rescued animals, finding itself in financial difficulty. Sometimes sanctuary founders are this short-sighted themselves and they continue to take on more animals than they can afford because they believe that recognition is right around the corner. We're so glad that we were able to provide Arthur, Andre, and Amanda a permanent home. The donor couple also funded the rescue of Christian, Max, and Kismet, the three other tigers we were able to ID plus another tiger so all four could continue to live together at their new home, Carolina Tiger Rescue. But these are the lucky few. We know from over 19 years of experience that we cannot rescue every animal that needs a home. The most effective way to help put an end to the suffering and abuse of big cats in America and around the world is to give them a voice. Please visit our website, bigcatrescue.org, to find ways that you can help make a difference.